Exploring the woods of Nelliambathi. That's our journey today. The forest story is all about sighting the famous lion-tailed macaque and a great Indian hornbill, hearing their story and staying in the bungalow named Pagdipalam of the forest department. So let's begin our journey. We are entering the forest by jeep after parking the car at Noradi in Nelliambathi. We take the same route to Karapara hanging bridge from Nelliambathi. There are coffee plantations at the beginning, but as we move forward, we could see hectares of tea plantations. Traveling a bit further, we could spot an elephant in the midst of the tea garden eating guava leaves. But it seemed to be ill and we came to know that it was caused after eating urea from a nearby store. But the most painful thing is that this elephant was found dead in 3 days after taking this video. But all the other elephants of the herd left behind this elephant alone and retreated for the forest after realizing this one has eaten urea and his health is at risk. So that's a striped necked mongoose. He is in search of food in the tea plantations, but retreated to the woods once he saw us. These Nilagiri langoos are almost everywhere here. Though they are not interested in giving good poses in front of the camera, it's quite fascinating to watch their activities. A sporting great Indian hornbill might be our most anticipating thing in the Nelliambathi trip. So here it is, the great Indian hornbill. Though we have the deepest desire to spot them during our Nelliambathi journey, it's not certain that we could spot them as soon as we reach here. Patience is the only key and it's very rare to spot them close. The most chances to spot them is in the coffee plantations after the tea plantations on the way to the Karapara hanging bridge and it's quite easier to find the second one once we spot the first one because they accompany each other everywhere they go every bird photographer would be longing to capture the flight of this great indian hornbill but it would be a difficulty unless you have a minimum 600 mm lens and a fast shutter camera anyway let's move forward There's a tortoise near the pond and the driver told us that he had spotted an Indian python at the exact same place last week. That python seemed to be a daily visitor in this area. We could hardly see something hiding behind the coffee plants. There are 5 to 6 wild goats behind the trees but they are retreating to the forest after seeing us. Though the number of tigers are very less here, leopards are often spotted in the coffee plantations. So we are entering the forest after passing the coffee and tea plantations. This road was built by the British to enable wood transportation. We can reach the Parambikulam Tiger Reserve by this road, but the public are not permitted. Moving ahead, there's a lion-tailed macaque. Though these endangered species don't possess much peculiarities, they are only seen in the south region of Western Ghats in the world. They usually belong in the evergreen rainforest and approaches humans hardly. They are mostly seen in Nelliambathi and Silent Valley and are occasionally seen in the Gudalur Ghats. It's quite a luck for us to spot them this close because they often stay on the branches of tall trees. They are named lion-tailed macaw after its resemblance to the lion's tail. Forest tiger fruit have their major diet, 
they are harmless to humans since they don't approach fields and this same landale mcock came to be the reason to drop the silent valley dam project in 1984 14 landtail macaques were spotted in the estimated project site and it was advised that erecting a dam would cause the complete extinction of this endangered species and the plan was dropped This road is best for the vehicles with good ground clearance two wheelers are not permitted and they charge 1600 including return if you hire a jeep and we are about to reach the pagadipalam bangalore of kfdc this is the forest bangalore in which we will be staying tonight they used to be quarters for the forest staff of nelliyambadi forest division of kerala forest development corporation limited and now it is open for the tourists there is a sit out with ample space and coming inside there is a spacious living room and many photos taken from here are hung on the wall and there are two rooms to the left and right to the living room it's spacious enough to accommodate four to five people lunch is also included in this package since we are checking in in the afternoon they pay a tariff of 4000 in the weekdays and 4600 on the weekends it will be same in the case of two or four tourists and we have we've been with us today and he has a youtube channel named dot green and to our luck we could spot two great indian hornbills near us so this is a female hornbill and we make the distinction by observing its eyes Female hornbill has a black dotted eye in a white round while the males have red eyes and there's a black shade below the horn. They love to travel as couple. Though they seem to be just birds, they have an average life expectancy of 50 years. This great Indian hornbill, the state bird for Kerala and Arunachal Pradesh, are mostly seen on the tall trees and are rarely spotted closely. They are seen in some parts of western Ghat region of Kerala and Karnataka and the rest are seen in the northeast part of India. And there is a festival named Hornbill Festival in Nagaland in the first week of December. but the festival is hardly related to the hornbill hornbills are mostly seen in the regions of nagaland assam and arunachal pradesh it's not just the beauty that makes the hornbill special but it takes only a single mate in the long 50 years of life once the adult hornbill starts living together with the mate they don't go after other hornbills even the mate is dead though they leave as a colony of 10 or 15 the male and female will be alone during the nesting and hatching period the male hornbill brings food for the gestating female they make their nests on the holes of tall trees and the female remains in the hole until the eggs are hatched so that's a male hornbill and they have dark red eyes and black shadows below their horn After watching them for a little while we decided to take a stroll in the compound usually deers are spotted but leeches are comparatively rare this is the road to parambikulam it's only 2 to 3 kilometers through this road to reach the border of parambikulam tiger reserve
and the room in which we stay is named as Nelly Mansion and this place is known as Pagudipalam and the stay is booked through the website of Kerala Forest Development Corporation and I have given the link in the description box. So this is the giant wood spider, the largest kind of spider that are seen in our region. The small one is the male spider. These are not that poisonous. Its bite causes itching. So it's better to bring a torch when you come here because it would be useful in the night when the power goes off. And BSNL is the only service provider which has a network here. So after the small trekking, we reached back the room and had a tea. Meantime, the jeep has arrived to take us to the forest. They take us to the forest for a little while and bring us back. This jeep safari was not mentioned on the website because it's a complimentary and offered only if the forest jeep is available. And if the jeep is available, they take us by 5 pm and bring us back by 6:30. Moving forward a little further, there is a wild goat grazing in the coffee plantation. That's a male wild goat. These coffee plants are here because this land used to be a private property and later it was attached to the forest. There are a lot of private properties attached to the forest in a similar way in Nelliambati and Parambikulam. And that's a flying squirrel. They are mostly seen in the night and are often seen near our stay as the guide told us. Though it's dark here, it's only 6:30. We've reached the room after the safari. Dinner was ready. Chapati, chicken curry and green beans curry were there as dinner. After the dinner, while talking in the sitar, we spotted a deer. The guide had shown us a photo of a leopard on the tree just in the front of us which was spotted last week. It was a bit cold in the morning. the compound is filled with the fog and don't forget to take the jacket with you especially during december and january the chirping of birds is so melodious After the black coffee, we are here for the walk again. There's an old building near our stay. This used to be a drying, processing, and store room when there was cardamom plantation, and it's locked now. There is no other cultivation other than these coffee plants. The woods are covered in the fog. The surrounding of the stay is electric fenced, and they are active in the night. Though there are in many elephants are also spotted rarely. After walking through the road for a little while we are entering into the forest this is a small stream there and this stream named Vettiyar originates from Pagudipalam itself this place is so beautiful since people barely visit here and this walk through the river is also not included in the package but if we ask the guide he'll come with us most tourists don't choose this walk because of the leeches here
The beauty and serenity this place gives are so amazing. Taking a quick scan through the surrounding, we spotted a small snake. That's a pit viper kind. They are commonly seen near the wild streams. These are mostly spotted in the South India and are divided into three kinds, namely Malabar pit viper, Anamale pit viper, and Travancore pit viper. Though they don't have much differences, they are named after the regions in which they are spotted. But if we move forward to the Silent Valley, they will be known as Malabar pit viper. Another peculiarity of these vipers are they are seen in different colors like green, blue and brown and it's told that they can change colors in a week's time. Though these are poisonous snakes but not life threatening. So a gentle reminder to bring your shoes during this trekking, not just for the grip on the rocks but as a protection from the unexpected snake bites. I bought these shoes from the Decathlon. After the walk, we reached back to the stay for the breakfast. We had idli, dosha and duck for the breakfast. After the breakfast, I walked for a little while to the pond nearby. Again there is a hornbill. It might be the same hornbill we spotted yesterday, but it's not that close to us. They don't make nests temporarily for the sake of hatchling as other birds do, but they make it permanently for the whole lifetime. They only change their nest once there arises a dangerous situation or when the tree was fallen. They are also known as the farmer of the forest since they defecate somewhere after eating the seeds. They are named after hornbill after the noise it makes. We couldn't hear that because we shot it from such a long distance. We could hear the flapping of wings during their flight and their beaks are big and strong enough to break the hard seeds. They usually eat fruits and seeds but rarely they prey on frogs and snakes. After a great time with Hornbill, we are heading back. I hope you enjoyed this video. So let's meet again in another video.